நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டேமல் வீடியோ of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is astrologer Deepa and I am presenting you the English version of Tamil video. In this video, I am going to explain about the effects of sun in different houses for the native of Aries ascendant. Sun is Lord of 5th house. Since Sun is a malefic, it should not be the Lord of 5th house. Sun gets exalted in 9th house to its own house which is Aries. It is not considered to be auspicious. When Sun gets exalted in ascendant house itself which is Aries. It might seem to you that I am speaking something contradictory. If you know how to make predictions in depth, definitely you will understand my concepts. For people who knows how to make only general predictions, my concepts will seem a bit vague. For native of Aries ascendant, if sun gets exalted in house of Aries, then dasha of sun will have spoiled the native rather than delivering benefits. Sun should not be exalted in ascendant house. The malefic sun should not get exalted in house of Aries. You have to definitely take into account Sthanabala of the planet. I will definitely explain how to predict the effects of sun in different houses and in certain places where it needs more explanation I will definitely do that in detail. For native of Aries ascendant sun is the planet that delivers progeny and fortune since it is lord of fifth house. Sun is responsible for giving good thoughts. However, despite all these, when sun gets exalted in house of Aries, for native of Aries ascendant, it will not deliver benefits. Sun can deliver benefits if only it has combusted Venus within 9 degrees or even I will say 6 degrees or if it is in connection with Jupiter. There are three stars that resides in Aries, Ashwini, Barani, Kritika. If only Sun resides in Kritika star, whose planet lord is Sun itself, it can deliver a certain amount of benefits. If it resides in Ashwini or Barani, 
whose planet lords are Ketu and Venus respectively, Sun will not deliver benefits during its major planetary period. Having said all this, when Sun becomes exalted in house of Aries, being lord of fifth house, it will not deliver benefits during its dasha. If Sun is Subhatva, then it will deliver benefits. In addition to this, if Sun is in connection with Saturn or Rahu or Ketu, Sun cannot deliver its natural effects. When Sun resides in second house to Aries, that is in Taurus, then it will deliver a lot of benefits. When Sun resides in Taurus, which is second house to Aries, Sun will deliver a lot of benefits because it gets Subhatva when it resides in house of Venus and when it resides in Taurus, it will be in 10th house to its own house Leo. When Sun resides in third house, that is in Gemini, it will not deliver much worse effects due to the following reasons. The first reason is when Sun resides in third house to Aries, which is Gemini, it resides in house whose Lord Mercury treats Sun as its best friend. The second point, when Sun resides in Gemini, it resides in the 11th house to its own house Leo. Third point, when Sun resides in Gemini, it is in third house to the ascendant house and it is considered to be auspicious when Sun resides in Upajayasthana such as third house, sixth house, tenth house or eleventh house. When Sun resides in Cancer which is fourth house to ascendant house, it is twelfth house to Leo. Since Sun resides in the house of Moon, you can make predictions according to strength of the dispositor that is moon. Since sun is the house lord of the fifth house and when it resides in the twelfth house to its own house Leo, it will deliver certain benefits. When sun resides in house of cancer, it also aspects tenth house to the ascendant house. When sun has connection with the tenth house, the profession will be always good. When Sun has connection with 10th house in natal chart, then definitely they will have good profession. Sun is one of the significator of profession. If a person has to get good profession, then Sun is the reason behind it. Regarding Jiva Karaka, Sun is the significator of father and regarding Ajiva Karaka, Sun is the significator of profession. Sun signifies both father and profession. Saturn and Sun both signifies the profession. I have already mentioned these in my past videos. I don't want to repeat all those points in this video. When Sun has connection with 10th house to the Ascendant house, then definitely it gives a good professional life. When will Sun deliver the benefits? If only it is Subhatva and not in connection with Saturn or Rahu. In case if Sun is in conjunction with Amavasya moon, then the effects delivered by the Sun will change. You have to always consider concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva while you are making predictions. In case if Sun resides in 10th house or when it has connection with 10th house to the Ascendant house and still Sun is not delivering benefits to you, then definitely Sun will have got a malafic connection. It might have got the connection of Amavasya moon or it might have been spoiled totally by Rahu. Or even Sun will be in conjunction with one degree with Saturn. If only you understand Subhatva and Babhatva concepts, you can make correct predictions. Having said all these, when Sun resides in fourth house, that is Cancer, 
and when it aspects 10th house to ascendant house it is very good for professional life for the native of aries ascendant sun will not deliver intense verse effects during its dasha therefore it is considered to be good when sun resides in cancer which is 4th house to aries when sun resides in 5th house that is in leo in its own house you have to check one point sun is half benefic and half malefic and it delivers 50% benefits and 50% worse effects because sun is a planet which is 50% benefic and 50% malefic because the general rule is when a benefic is in 5th house it is considered to be auspicious favorable and when a malefic resides in quadrants it is considered to be good since sun is a blend of benefic and malefic then based on degree it resides you have to make predictions you have to check whether the sun is within 10 degrees of house or within 20 degrees of the house or within 20 to 30 degrees of the house well how to make predictions based on sthanabala i have already mentioned a point in order to predict the effect of sun when it resides in aries there are three stars that resides in leo maga nakshatra purva falguni and uttara falguni in tamil we say magam puram uttiram when it resides in uttara falguni whose planet lord is sun itself it will deliver fifth house effects when it resides in star uttara falguni whose lord is sun itself it will definitely deliver fifth house effects and in addition to this furthermore if there is a connection of jupiter or a natural benefic it can deliver more benefits in case if sun resides in maga star then how to make predictions in case if it resides in maga nakshatra how to make predictions rahu ketu or two shadowy planets that are really hard to understand if sun resides within 12 degrees in leo it means that it resides in maga nakshatra whose house lord is ketu in case if it is within 24 degrees it means that it is in purva falguni nakshatra venus is the star lord of purva falguni in addition to sun's position let us consider position of venus as well venus is the planet that always travels with sun in case if venus is in house of virgo you know very well that venus is debilitated there in case if venus resides in the house of sun that is leo it is weak in case if venus resides in house of cancer that is also considered to be weak so when venus resides in cancer or leo venus is considered to be weak we have to definitely analyze which position of the sun will be the most favorable in case of sun resides in maga nakshatra what will happen when a planet resides in the stars whose star lords are rahu or ketu then you have to imagine as if the star lords or the planets which are nothing but the house lords of where rahu or ketu resides in your natal chart let me repeat this point when the planet resides whose star lords are rahu or ketu then you have to imagine that the planet resides in star lords which is nothing but house lord of where rahu or ketu resides in your natal chart and while delivering the effect 
it will be blend of the effects of Ketu and Rahu. Let me explain with an example. Let us imagine that sun resides in Magha Nakshatra. And let us also imagine that Ketu, which is the star lord of Magha Nakshatra, resides in 7th house. Rahu resides in ascendant house. Now, Ketu resides in house of Libra. Who is the house lord of Libra? It is Venus. Having said all these, when sun resides in Magha Nakshatra, whose star lord is Ketu, please check where Ketu resides. In this natal chart, Ketu resides in 7th house, that is Libra, whose house lord is Venus. So we have to conceptualize that sun resides in the star of Venus. Now let me come to the part of prediction. Ketu is a significator of wisdom. It is called as Jnana Karaka. What Ketu will do when it resides in house of Libra? Here the predictions are to be made in such a way that sun will deliver effects of fifth house in addition to effects of Ketu with a blend of significance of Venus. So here sun will deliver fifth house effects in addition to seventh house effects as well. This might be confusing to you. This is a general video explaining concepts of planet for 12 different ascendants. I will definitely publish a video titled Nakshatra and Star Lots, which will be definitely dedicated to explain these concepts. I will definitely explain in those videos regarding this. For native of Aries Ascendant, please check in which star Sun resides. If Sun resides in Magha Nakshatra, whose planet lord is Ketu, then check in which house Ketu resides. Let us imagine that Ketu resides in Capricorn. The house lord of the Capricorn is Saturn. So you have to imagine as if Sun resides in the star whose lord is Saturn. In case, let us imagine that Ketu resides in Pisces. House Lord of Pisces is Jupiter. So when Sun resides in Magha Nakshatra, whose star lord is Ketu, and Ketu resides in Pisces, then you have to imagine as if Sun resides in a star whose lord is Jupiter. In this case, you have to make predictions blending the significance of Ketu plus effect of planet Ketu when it resides in 12th house and result of these two will be delivered through Jupiter to the Sun. Please understand that Jupiter acts like a mediator by which effects are passed to the Sun. This is how you have to understand how Nakshatra works. Having said all these, when Sun resides in 5th house, it will do 50% benefits and 50% worse effects. This is valid based on the concept that a malefic should not be the lord of trine. In case if sun has combusted Venus in 5th house and also gets aspect of Jupiter, then benefits delivered by sun are immense. It is understood by everybody that when sun resides in Leo, the person will have been born during the month of Avani, that is during Shravan, mid-August to mid-September. Sun traverses every sign a month. Therefore, sun traverses 12 signs each sign a month in a year. Therefore, when sun resides in Leo, it means a person was born during month of Avani, that is Shravan, mid-August to mid-September. In this case, if Sun combusts Venus within 9 degrees, it is very auspicious. And in case if Venus gets combusted by Sun within 1 degree, it means Sun is in the highest Subhatva state. In addition to this, if Sun is aspected by Jupiter by 4 or 5 degrees, it is very auspicious. 
if they are in the very same degree aspecting each other then it is considered to be a raj yoga it is equal to the natal chart of a king this person is 100% eligible to become a king this person is all the way eligible to become the greatest ruler or leader based on strength of the ascendant and 10th house you have to make further predictions sun is lord of 5th house leo and sun resides in its own house leo and sun has combusted venus and let us imagine that jupiter which resides in sagittarius aspects sun in leo definitely this person will lead in politics we can finalize our prediction by further checking strength of ascendant and other planets in the natal chart we can decide whether this person can lead a small party or a big party a political party etc or whether he can be the top most head of an organization or a team leading a group of people well now let us imagine that sun resides in 6th house to the ascendant it is not considered to be auspicious when sun which is lord of 5th house is in 6th house that is virgo just now i made a point when a malefic resides in upachaya sthanas such as 3rd house 6th house 10th house or 11th house it is auspicious but that rule cannot be applied here for the native of aries ascendant sun which is the lord of 5th house should not be in 6th house to the ascendant house anyway sun resides in a house whose house lord treats sun as the most friendly planet therefore sun will not give very bad effects lord of 5th house is very very important like the hands of human body the ascendant lord acts as vitality of the life the 5th house lord acts like hands of the body and 9th house lord acts like legs of the body in case of sun resides in 6th house to the ascendant house which is indeed the lord of the 5th house what will happen the 5th house effects will be completely reduced a male child would not be born or even if a male child is born nato might separate from the child after a certain period of time this planetary position helps the divorce of the parents as well if somebody asks me whether they will get divorce then i will check the natal chart of their child if they have one based on the culture of the people we are making predictions in most cases what will happen after a divorce a child will be brought up under the guidance of the mother so if a child is destined to get separated from the father in its life then connection of sun and saturn will be definitely present in the natal chart If somebody is approaching me to ask whether they will get divorced then I don't check just the chart of one person I will check the natal charts of the couple that is both husband and wife In case if they have children let us say one child or two children then I will get the natal charts of the children as well If a divorce is going to happen then the child will definitely get separated from the father and it will be under the custody of the mother i would like to add one more point in general when a divorce happens the wife will not care about the husband anymore the wife usually sows the seed of hatred in a child's mind like blaming the father that he has not done anything fruitfully either to her or to the children This is the usual characteristic of the majority of the women. In this case definitely 
one child or both the children will definitely have some hatred when they grow. The combination of Sun and Saturn is the reason for this. The eligibility of getting a divorce by the parents can be definitely found in the natal chart of the child. The ninth house will not be much good. When the ninth house is not good, the father will not behave like a father at all. When the ninth house is sort of okay, it means that father is alive for the child. Based on strength of the ninth house, we can check the status of the father. But the significance of the father, which is son, will be in connection with Saturn or Rahu. And once the dasha of son starts, the child will get separated from the father and the child will move along with the mother. This is what son will deliver when it is in sixth house to the ascendant house for native of Aries ascendant. Because being lord of fifth house, it comes to the sixth house. When this natal chart person bears a child, then he or she will not be able to live with their children to raise them. The Lord of 5th house resides in the 6th house. Since Sun is the Lord of 5th house, then it resides in 6th house to Ascendant house. It affects Father. In order to check the progeny of this person, you have to check the natural significator of the progeny which is Jupiter. In case Jupiter is debilitated or Pabatva, then there will be no male child or even if a male child is born, then definitely it will get separated from the father before it starts to call the father as dad. We can make a lot of predictions based on the combination of planets and houses. Therefore, even though it is said that when a malefic becomes Lord of Fifth House, it is auspicious when they reside in Upajaya Sthanas such as 3rd House, 6th House, 10th House or 11th House. And here in this case, though Sun resides in the 6th House, whose house Lord Mercury treats Sun as the most friendly planet, in regard to certain areas of the life of native, it is not good when Sun resides in 6th house. Being a luminous planet, Sun should not reside in 6th house to the ascendant house. Yet, when the dispositor, the Mercury is in Parivartan, it will not deliver much worse effects. Now, let me explain the effect of Sun in house of Libra. Sun becomes debilitated in house of Libra, which is 7th house to the ascendant house. Most of the time, Sun will get Nichibanga, that is cancellation of debility, when it resides in house of Libra. Or sometimes it will get Parivartan with Venus. This will not give much worse effects to the ascendant. The debilitation of Sun is not such a great concern. Because Sun resides in house of Venus, Libra. Therefore, Sun gets Subhatsava when it resides in Libra. From the seventh house, it aspects the ascendant house. Even if Sun gets debilitated, it is okay. But it should not get the aspect of Saturn or conjunction of Rahu or Saturn. Though Sun and Mars are mutual friends, even without my knowledge, I haven't mentioned the combination of Sun and Mars. Because Saturn, Mars and Rahu are primary malefics. Though this video is about native of Aries ascendant, I have not mentioned connection of Mars with any other planet. This happens without my knowledge spontaneously. So far I have not talked about Mars. Among the worst three malefics, 
Mars is 75% malefic and Mars and Sun are mutual friends. When Sun and Mars have a connection with each other, then it indicates power or authority. It is like combination of king and chief commander. So here in this case, don't bring the concept that Mars is malefic. If only you understand the intricate concepts, then astrology becomes a cakewalk. When Sun resides in 7th house, it means that 5th house Lord is in the quadrant house, which is not considered to be a good position. When Sun resides in Libra, most of the times there is a chance to get Nichabanga, that is cancellation of debility. Since Sun resides in Libra, it gets Subhatva. If Sun gets aspect of Jupiter, it is considered to be more auspicious. If Sun is in connection with Venus, then definitely Sun gets Nichabanga status. The position of the Sun where it gets debilitated in 7th house is better than its position in 6th house to the ascendant house. Please try to understand the concept of debilitation, exaltation and sthanabala and in addition to this of course subhatva and pabhatva. In case of sun gets debilitated in 7th house and also becomes Pabhatva, then this person will not have self-confidence at all. This is the point of prediction. You have to remember definitely this. Here Sun should not get aspect of Saturn and that is a total disaster. In case if this debilitated Sun is aspected by another debilitated Saturn, then it is still worse. Sun becomes Pabhatva in this case. You might ask me if there is a rule that when a debilitated planet aspects another debilitated planet, it is considered to be exaltation. No, this rule cannot be applied here. In case if Sun gets aspected by Saturn, then definitely this person will not have self-confidence at all. When sun gets debilitated, it means that it will not deliver benefits like authority, power, etc. But still the person will have self-confidence when somebody is born after I Percy 20, that is Ashwina, mid-October, mid-November, sun is not considered as debilitated. When sun crosses 10 degrees, then intensity of debilitation gets reduced. I will definitely say that sun should not be considered as debilitated if it crosses 20 degrees during the month of Ipasi, that is Ashwina. Please try to understand the concept of deep exaltation and deep debilitation status. Only the first 10 degrees in the Libra house, Sun is considered as debilitated. In the first 10 degrees of Libra, Sun will be in a status of deep debilitation. In this case, it is good when Sun gets Nichibanga status. It is very much necessary that Sun should get cancellation of debility when it resides within first 10 degrees of Libra. When Sun resides between 10 to 20 degrees in Libra, it can deliver benefits to a certain extent, which is sort of neutral state. After I Percy 20, that is Ashwina 20, if a person is born, please don't consider Sun is debilitated. This is an intricacy of astrology and it is very important to understand this particular point. The debilitation of sun will not deliver such a worse effect provided it is not in connection with Saturn and Rahu or Rahu. When sun resides in 8th house, it resides in its very friendly house. 
though it is considered inauspicious when sun is in 6th or 8th or 12th house to ascendant it is still in the quadrant house to its own house leo and it is in friendly house this will deliver certain unfavorable results but it will not deliver very worse effects because when sun resides in house of mars which is friendly planet to sun in which way sun will deliver worse effects when it resides in scorpio it will affect the leadership it will affect the significance of sun it will affect the father of the natal because sun is the significator of father so it will affect the father which is the significance of the sun and it will have the worse effects of the fifth house it is not good when fifth house lord is in sixth house or when fifth house lord is in eighth house yet there is a difference between when fifth house lord resides in sixth house and when fifth house lord resides in eighth house when sun resides in house of virgo it resides in a house whose house lord alone treats sun as its most friendly planet therefore in comparison to sixth house it is better when sun resides in eighth house whose house lord and sun are mutually treating each other as friends what is the difference when fifth house lord resides in sixth house and when it resides in eighth house for the native of aries ascendant this is the difference sun likes mars very much so it will be very happy when sun resides in sixth house sun does not even bother about the house lord whereas only house lord treats sun as its most friendly planet this is the reason i say it is a bit better when sun resides in 8th house when compared with the position of sun in 6th house which is virgo when sun resides in 9th house it is such a great position because it has got a lot of subhatva sun which is 50% benefic resides in 9th house which is 5th house to leo If sun and mars are in conjunction in house of jupiter which is sagittarius then it delivers great benefits the ascendant lord and the lord of 5th house are in conjunction in 9th house the lord of 5th and the 1st house that is ascendant are in the 9th house therefore the conjunction of sun and mars in sagittarius delivers great benefits the benefits will be delivered during dasha of sun having said this when sun resides in sagittarius it is extremely beneficial when sun resides in 10th house that is in capricorn it gains digbala that is directional strength sun will have digbala when it resides in 9th house 10th house or 11th house to the ascendant house when sun resides in saturn house it is not good but to compensate this shortcoming when sun gets directional strength it is very auspicious it is favorable when sun resides in 10th house to the ascendant house for the native of aries ascendant in case if saturn is in conjunction with sun it will definitely reduce the dig bala of the sun therefore when saturn is in conjunction with sun in 10th house for native of aries ascendant it will reduce the strength of the sun since saturn is a malefic and resides in its own house it is stronger than sun saturn is dead enemy to sun in case if these two planets were aspected by jupiter or if venus is in the middle of these two planets then the effects will be different because both the planets get subhatva when venus is in the middle of these two planets that is saturn and sun then it means 
both Saturn and Sun are in good status. Imagine that there are three planets in Capricorn whose house lord is Saturn. There are Saturn, Sun and Venus in Capricorn. When Sun resides in Capricorn, it gets directional strength. This is Chara Rashi of Saturn, that is movable sign of Saturn. This is not Moultricon house of Saturn, rather this is the own house. I repeat, when Saturn is in Capricorn, it is with own house status. Sun has got directional strength and Venus is in between these two planets. What will happen? Sun is in one pole. Imagine like this. Sun is in one pole. Saturn is at another pole. And Saturn is ready to kick Sun. And Sun will be ready to defend Saturn. When there is no Venus in between them. When Venus is in middle of these two planets. It helps these two planets not to fight with each other. This is what the benefit brought by Subhatwa. Here the effects delivered by conjunction of Saturn and Sun will completely change. Saturn will not be in a fighting mode with Sun and Sun can also not fight with Saturn. The single planet Venus can change the complete effects. And let us imagine that Jupiter aspects from Cancer, where it is exalted. Or even let us imagine that Jupiter is in Virgo, which aspects both Sun and Saturn. Then the effects delivered by Sun will be completely different. Based on this planetary position, Sun will think like, Okay, well I have to do something good for the native of Aries Ascendant. I don't have time to fight with Saturn. And Saturn will think like, okay, let me try to do something good to the native of Aries Ascendant. Therefore, when Sun, Saturn and Venus are in conjunction in Capricorn and gets aspected by Jupiter as well, then Sun will deliver immense benefits. This is the prediction for the planetary conjunction. For the native of Aries Ascendant, if Saturn, Venus and Sun are in conjunction in 10th house Capricorn, what will happen? I have already said that Sun and Saturn should never be in conjunction in any natal chart. But in this situation, Saturn is in its own house with conjunction of Venus. Saturn will be in Avastha because it is in conjunction with Sun which is a dead enemy to Saturn. In addition to this, when Jupiter aspects from the house of Cancer or somewhere from Virgo, then these two planets, Sun and Saturn, will not be in a fighting mood anymore and they will initiate the steps to help the native of Aries Ascendant. This is the benefit delivered by Subhatwa. Astrology is nothing but finding the effects of different planetary positions with different status. What I say will definitely apply 100% correctly. Though Saturn and Sun are dead enemies, the Drigbala can turn the enmity into goodness. Definitely you will find this to be true if you have observed any natal chart. Even Saturn will tend to do good for the native of Aries Ascendant. Let us imagine another situation. Saturn and Sun are in conjunction in Capricorn. Venus is 40 degrees or 30 degrees apart from Sun. And there is no Drigvala from Jupiter. What will happen? Both the planets Saturn and Sun will be spoiled. This person will be in a leading position, but nobody will obey the head. What will happen during the Dasha of Sun? The native will face many problems due to the servants. 
because Saturn is the planet that is in conjunction with Sun. How to understand the significance and bhava of the planet? The Sun has got directional strength in Capricorn. Sun is Yoga Dipadi for the native of Aries Ascendant. It is Lord of the 5th house. What will happen here and how to make predictions? Based on strength of the Ascendant and strength of the Sun, the person will be definitely in a leading position. Whether it is a very small organization or a big organization, this person will be in a leading position. But there will be always some issues that this person will face with the people who works for him. There will be some problems due to significance of Saturn. How to understand the significance and effects of Bhava? The people around this native will tend to cheat the native or might not work very well for this person. This person can be even ahead for only 10 people. But he will face problems from these 10 people. What is the significance of the planet Saturn? It is cunning. You should apply or blend this character to make predictions. Therefore, the people who work for this person will be cunning and the leader will get cheated. How to gauge that how far this native will get affected or intensity of the problems that this native will face? It is based on the degrees of conjunction you have to make predictions. Based on degrees of conjunction, whether it is 8 degrees or 13 degrees or 22 degrees between the planets, you have to make predictions. All these can be avoided if there is a conjunction of Venus and aspect of Jupiter. If suppose Sun is aspected by full moon, which is month of Thai, that is Pausha, mid-January to mid-February, and let us say moon resides in Pusam nakshatra, that is Pushya nakshatra, then conjunction of Saturn and Sun in Capricorn will not have any adverse effects. Each of these two planets will deliver its benefits through their significance. Saturn will deliver the effects for which it is responsible that is 10th house effects to the native of Aries Ascendant. If conjunction receives aspect of waxing moon, Saturn will be without any avastha that is irritation, though it is in conjunction with sun. All these will happen during major planetary period or minor planetary period that is dasha or antar dasha of Saturn or sun. Or this will happen during major planetary period of Saturn, minor planetary period of Sun, or major planetary period of Sun, minor planetary period of Saturn. So please try to understand how Drigbala or Subhatva of the planet can turn adverse effects of conjunction of malefics. Now let me explain when Sun resides in 11th house that is Aquarius. As I already told, please remember always the belt of 9th house, 10th house, 11th house for the Sun because Sun attains Digbala in these houses. When Sun resides in Aquarius, it means that person is born during month of Masi that is Maga in Hindi, mid-February to mid-March and Sun aspect its own house Leo. In this case, 5th house gets strengthened since Sun is 50% benefic. At this point, I said that Leo gets strengthened but does not get Subhatva. Did you notice that? I told Leo gets strengthened but I did not mention that Leo got Subhatva. 
I'm an astrologer who never use any exaggerated words to explain my concepts because that is quite misleading sometimes. I said that Leo gets strengthened because Sun does not have strength to make the house Subhatva. Sun aspects its own house, fifth house to the ascendant and strengthens it. Leo is the house of Sun and it gets strengthened by Sun. Those who are born in the month of Masi that is Magga mid-February to mid-March, Leo will be strong. When Sun is in conjunction with Venus or Jupiter or Full Moon or at least Lone Mercury, then Leo gets Subhatva. If Sun is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, then Leo gets Pabhatva. Leo will never get Pabhatva by Mars. When Leo house is aspected by Mars, it helps to get authority. When Mars has connection with Leo, then Leo never gets Pabhatva, though Mars is a malefic. Only Saturn and Rahu are capable of making the Leo sign Pabhatva. Some people ask me a question. Even in connection of Saturn and Rahu, some people get authoritative jobs or leadership jobs. I mentioned three points for getting certain effects like an authoritative job. The very first is significance of the planet. Second is Bhava. Third is the planet which is the natural significator. Even though Leo does not have the greatest strength in a natal chart, yet when Sun gets extreme strength or highest strength in a natal chart, then you will get jobs with leadership qualities. This will definitely happen. What is the difference between President of America and President of an African country? Indeed, both are Presidents of their own country. If the President of the United States of America decides to destroy the whole world, it can happen in a wink of an eye by his comment. There are certain poorest countries in whose countries also a president exists. Our country is also a developing country but better than many. So let me take an example like an underdeveloped country. Let us imagine that um, it is Maldives. It is a very small island. Of course in Maldives also there is a president. The president of America is also a president. So how do they differ? It is strength of the sun that makes a difference. You have to check how authoritative a person can be based on sun, bhava and significance. Let me reiterate some points. If sun is very strong in a natal chart, then they will get authoritative jobs. When Leo is also with good strength, then they will get a higher level of job. I'm explaining all these because in future, I'm going to explain certain natal charts of politicians. In future, I'm going to explain birth charts of famous people. It can be even future politicians. I'm definitely going to publish all those videos. The points that I will explain now will be definitely helpful to you in order to understand the natal charts of the politicians. You might ask if Leo is Pabatwa, still the person gets the job of leadership. In this case, Sun will be extremely Subhatwa. In this natal chart, Sun will have definitely got a lot of strength. Sun will not be affected by any other planets. I mentioned a very important point that only for native of Aries ascendant, Sun should not get exalted, not for other ascendants. 
definitely you have to consider for which ascendant you are checking and based on that you have to consider whether a particular planet can get the highest strength or not. The art of astrology lies in learning the rules and exceptions and applying those at the very right situation. For the forthcoming ascendance, I will definitely explain which planet can be exalted. Only for native of Aries ascendant, I said that sun should not get exalted. Having said all these, when sun is in the 11th house, it aspects its own house Leo and it can strengthen its own house. It means that native was born during month of Masi. In Hindi, we say Maga, mid-February to mid-March. In addition to this, when Leo is Subhatva and Sun is also Subhatva, then it will help the native to get the highest leadership jobs. Imagine that the person is born during the month of Masi and Maga, birth nakshatra, which means it is full moon, then the person will get a job of a very high status. Sun and Leo needs to be Subhatva to get very high ranking jobs. When Sun resides in 12th house to ascendant house that is Pisces, Sun will be in the 8th house to its own house and it will be in the 12th house to the ascendant house. Sun resides in house of Jupiter, so there are no worse effects, but it is neither good. When Lord of 5th house is in 8th house to its own house Leo and in 12th house to the ascendant house, what will happen? There will be some shortcomings due to the children or the father, but nothing will go beyond the hands of the native because Sun resides in house of Jupiter that makes Sun Subhatva. There will not be many ups and downs due to this planetary position. Well, this is all about the effects of Sun in 12 different houses for the native of Aries Ascendant. In my next video, I am going to explain the effects of Sun in different houses for the native of Taurus Ascendant. Well, this is question time. Is it considered to be auspicious when Sun gets exalted for the native of Aries Ascendant without any Subhatva? Whether it is yes or no, please justify your answer. Please write your answer in the comment section of this video. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video, please check the description box, you will find it. Write your feedback to astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.